Hello, my name is Ralph Friedrichs. I'm an addiction recovery coach and the host of the Take Your Life Back Today show. As an addiction recovery coach, I want to share something with you and let me be crystal clear to leave an everlasting impact upon you. Imagine, just imagine being buried alive. You're in a coffin, but you know you're not dead. You don't know how to get out of that coffin. You tried lifting the lid, but the enormous weight upon the lid from the dirt is just too heavy to lift the lid. You try banging on the lid, hoping that maybe you're on settle the dirt and somebody might dig their way down to helping you. This is what it's like to find yourself at the lowest point of alcohol and drug addiction. You know you need help. You can't do it on your own, but you don't know where to turn. In reality, there are probably people standing by your grave. You just didn't know that. You just thought you're going to die. Usually, though, people don't think about death when they're habitually abusing drugs and alcohol. In order to feed an addiction, you have to be great at repressing the fear of death. I often ask you, my audience, did it ever cross your mind that maybe, just maybe, you might take something that God has given you. God gave you life to see waterfalls and, and streams. And you might take that by abusing drugs and alcohol. With this, let me leave one last thought. Don't be the person that I just read about on these index cards that waited and waited and waited until it was way too late. Instead, pick up the phone. Call me at 844-405-HELP. And I promise you, my friends, I will help you take your life back before your life is gone like this person. People like Larry Geist from the Geist Academy at 516-458-2741. Larry Geist has over 30 years experience as a life coach and addiction recovery coach. He and I tell folks like you all the time, it doesn't matter where you've been, it doesn't matter where you came from. What matters is that you're here today looking for a better tomorrow. Call Larry at 516-458-2741 or you can find him at www.odysseyconsultant.org. Larry Geis will take you from addiction to recovery, from depression to happier times. He will also take you from low self-esteem to the highest self-esteem that you might have. Larry Geis from the Geis Academy, 516-458-2741. Don't forget to take your slippers off at night and stick them under your bed. Not by the edge of your bed, but under your bed. In the morning, practice what I call knee mail, K-N-E-E mail. Knee mail is when you're on your knees thanking God for another beautiful day, asking God for guidance and for uh, direction, asking God for mercy and forgiveness, thanking God for having a home, a family, food. Nemail is your personal chat line to God. Each and every day it should be done. And no better time to do it than retrieving those slippers that you put under your bed last night in the morning and while you're on your knees, just utilize that time. Use your words from your lips to God's ears every day, and you'll see different results in your life. might not happen right away, my friends. Give it time. It will happen. Knee mail. Now stand straight up, roll your shoulders back, stick your chest out, and walk with God 24-7. Ten ways, my friends, to repair bridges you might have burnt in your life. Don't ever burn bridges. This is the piece of advice that most of us have heard most of our lives. Whether it's talking about your career or your personal life, the advice is sound and solid. Should you ever burn a bridge, the ramifications can be serious. The internet connects people all over the world and one burnt relationship can close hundreds of potential, potential doors for you. And in your personal life, be it a relative or a friend, Life is just too short to cut someone off forever. However, we all make mistakes. I myself have burned a few bridges in my life. Um, I can think of so many. And I, I would love to discuss all of them. Probably five or six bridges that I've burned in my life. But think about maybe how you have burned a bridge. You can repair a burned bridge as I have. And here are 10 ways to get you started. Number one way to burn a bri uh, to repair a burned bridge is don't let this fester. The bridge may be still uh, smoldering or it could be, have burned up a long time ago. Either way, you can't let it stay this way one second longer. If you have just burned a bridge, make moves to repair it immediately and jump to the third point on this list when we get to it. 
it's been a while, even years, then you have to ease into it. But this has to happen sooner rather than later. The longer you leave it, the harder it is to repair. Number two is to take small steps by repairing a burnt bridge. The first way to start healing process is to take small steps, very small steps. You cannot barge back into the life and expect them to be responsive. After all, you may have been mulling this for over for months, but they have almost certainly moved past you. So take the smaller steps back towards their direction. If you have unfriended each other on Facebook, start there. If it's a work relationship, try LinkedIn. If you see each other around, be friendly, even if they are cold. You don't have to make any grand guess, uh, gestures. You simply are uh, preparing the groundwork for a repair down the road. Number three is to make the first move. Once you've made that, some subtle steps, you have to be uh, uh, the one to reach across the aisle and start the healing process. You can't expect the other person to make any kind of move towards you by dropping a few hints or smiling in their general directions. You burnt the bridge even if their behavior led to you in the light, the match. So put your pride aside and reach out to them. Number four, and this is a big one, is you have to be sincere. When you do make your move, you have to be 100% committed to repairing the burn bridge. And that starts with sincerity. If you want something from the other person, for example, a job at his company, your, uh, your half-hearted attempts at making up will be blatantly transparent. You do not want to come across as someone who is simply stomaching the process in order to get something worthwhile. If you cannot be sincere, this is not the right time. If you do not know how to be sincere because the wound is still open, this is definitely, definitely not the right time then. Number five, admit that you were wrong. But I wasn't in the wrong. It was the idiot's fault, you might say. Yes, of course, you may be feeling that way. But for whatever reason you are trying to repair this bridge, the other person doesn't need to fit the, uh, lift a finger because they have less to gain than you do if you're trying to get something out of it. So you may have to prepare a little humble pie for yourself and eat it with a smile. By admitting you were wrong, you are giving the other person some closure in the matter, and they are and you are also elevating them to a different level. They have some power. They feel like they have higher ground than you. From that position, it is much easier to reach out and reconcile. <laughs> Number six is to listen. I mean, really listen. If you are lucky enough to start a dialogue, these initial attempts can lead uh, to being blanked if you do not listen then you have the chance to find out their side of the story and truly understand their side of the story this is the time to open yourself up to a whole new shift in life what uh, what were they going through at the time all this might have happened did you misunderstand something that they did was the original dispute something small that got out of hand did you overreact to something as you listen repeat what you hear back to the person. One of the most important parts of conflict resolution is knowing that you are being heard and you're being understood. Number seven is a strong one again and a good one is say sorry and I mean you have to mean it. When it comes to repairing a bridge sorry can go a long way. It's a small wo word but it's one of the hardest for people to say. If you have kids you'll know how difficult it is to pry it out of them. It's one thing to admit you were wrong but you have to back it up with an apology. The other person will appreciate it, even if they have a hard time hearing it at first. I am so sorry I have ever let this get out of hand can work wonders in repairing a burnt bridge. It puts the responsibility on your shoulders and often makes the other person feel like they should take some of the blame also. No, no, it was my fault too. Hey, look at that. That will work. There's some kind of resolution taking shape in this relationship. And then, of course, eight is to ask for forgiveness. This is another opportunity for you to eat crow and put the other person in a position of power. There is no shame in asking someone to forgive your former transgressions. You can be stubborn and say point blank what you did and what you did was nothing wrong, but that won't get you where you need to go. It is. It can be simply as, can you ever forgive me for my actions? Number nine is to lay down guidelines. 
There can be no repeat of what happened before. The best way to avoid this is to simply lay down a few rules for a way ahead. We will no longer talk about X, Y, and Z, or please talk to me the second you see a concern that's bothering you. It's a simple way to establish some new boundaries. Have regular checkups and make sure everything is going along smoothly. Small problems can escalate into huge problems, and before you know it, the bridge is starting to smolder again. Number 10, do not take this advice or any new relationship or repaired relationship for granted. This is not. Uh, this is now a new fragile relationship, even though you may know each other for many years. You cannot fall back into the same routine that resulted in the burnt bridge in the first place. Don't go back into old habits. You may have joked about certain things that were okay back then, but will be off limits now, especially if it's related to the incident that caused the rift in the first place. At work, you may have treated this person as a friend, even though they have been um, um, your superior for many years. You need to respect those barriers now. Be friendly, open, accessible, and if it's in the work environment, be very professional. This, These are the 10 things to repair a burnt bridge. I don't care who you are. Every one of us has burnt a bridge. It could have been when we were very young and just didn't care but if you have burned a bridge, utilize some of those 10 steps. But two of them that are very important is the fact that you need to explain that you are sorry and the fact that you need to listen to their concerns. Those two factors are very important. Let today be the first day of you repairing burned bridges from the past. And let today be the first day that you ask God for guidance and direction. And may God bless each and every one of you. Take care.